uh, the picture I just um, showed before. Good morning, it's Ethnic Green Living here, and I am back with the Make Your House Home Challenge. This is week two, and it's day three, and I'm so excited that you're here with me again. <clears throat> the first thing that I want to talk about uh, comes from day 197. It says, Love, delight in God. And it says, Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you your heart's desires. From Psalms 37 and 4. Do you trust God completely to supply what you need? When we are seeking him first, loving him first, and making our relationships with him a top priority, he promises to supply us with what we really need. When he is our true delight, we continue to realize the inadequacy of every other substitute. Jesus once spoke to a woman at Samaritan Well, a woman who had tried getting her needs met through a string of failed relationships with both her life and her water an empty bucket. She had come to this place broken and hardened, but Jesus, but in Christ, she found what he is calling living waters, John 4 and 10, a supply that isn't just for quenching temporary thirst. What he offered her was a drink of soul satisfaction that never quits giving and refreshing. This is what's available to you. No matter who your spouse is or what they've done, God is your everyday supply of everything you need. Um, and the dare was, be intentional about making time to pray and read your Bible. Try to read a chapter out of Proverbs or the Gospel each day. As you do, immerse yourself in the love that God has for you. So that, we're starting the day off with God. Now we're going to go ahead to spouse. And this is from day 196 of the same book. It says, love, trust in God. I've learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. And that's from Philippians 4 and 11. You place expectations on your spouse every day. Sometimes they meet them, sometimes they don't. But never will they be totally able to satisfy the demands you ask of them. This is partly because some of your demands are unreasonable and partly because your mate is only human. God, however, is not. And those who approach him in utter dependence each day for the real needs of their life are the ones who find out just how dependable he is. Can your spouse give you inner peace? No, but God can. Can your spouse enable you to be content no matter what situation in life it throws at you? No, but God can. That's why you need to seek him every day. Don't worry about in anything, but in everything, through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses every thought, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And that's Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7. Realize your, or release your spouse from the pressures of meeting the needs that only God himself can satisfy in you. Do we hold our uh, spouse accountable for something that only God can do for us? I know I have. And this is really good. And I'm uh, glad that I learned that. Uh, my friend gave me a scripture, let your expectation come from God. And ever since then, I was able to release my spouse, um, you know, of that question. What expectation do you have for your spouse? Are they are the expectations healthy and honoring to God? Are you looking for satisfaction that God alone reserves the right to fulfill? Chapter 10 of this book says, love is a choice. How can we speak each other's love language when we're full of hurt, anger, resentment, or over past failures? The answer to that question lies in the essential nature of our humanity. We are creatures of choice. That means we have the capability to make poor choices, which all of us have done. We have spoken critical words and we have done hurtful things. We're not proud of those choices, although they may have seemed justified at the moment. Poor choices in the past don't mean that we must make them in the future. Instead, we can say, I'm sorry, I know that I've hurt you, but I would like to make the future different. I would like to love you in your love language. I would like to meet your needs. I have seen marriage rescued from the brink of divorce when couples make the choice to love. Love doesn't erase the past but it does make the future different. When we choose to actively express, when we choose active expressions of love in the primary love language of our spouse, we create an emotional climate where we can deal with our past conflicts and failures. So what areas um, do you need to deal with? What things do you want to be different in your future, in the future of your marriage?
The secret to your success is plugging into your power source. Let's be honest, during a typical day in the life of a mother, there are times when it's easy to be a positive person. There's a time when it's not so easy. So I'm just dropping down for time's sake. She said recently a friend sent her something from a high school um, economics book back used back in the 1950s. She said she thought it was interesting. And so I'm just going to go over it because I just think it's really good. It says instructions for housewives. One, have dinner ready. Plan ahead, even the night before, to have a delicious meal on the table on time. This is a way of letting your husband know that you have been thinking about him and you to prepare yourself. Take 15 minutes to rest so you'll be refreshed when your husband comes home. Touch up your makeup, put a ribbon in your hair, and be fresh looking. He has just been with a lot of work weary people. Be a little happy and more interesting. His boring days need to lift. Three, clear away the clutter. Make one last trip through the main part of the house just before your husband arrives. Gather up school books, toys, paper, etc. Then run a dust cloth over the the table. Your husband will feel as if he has reached a haven for the rest and order and it will give you a lift too. Four, prepare the children. Take a few minutes to wash the children's hands and faces. Their small comb their hair if necessary, change their clothes. They are little treasures and he would like to see them playing the part. Five, minimize the noise. At this time of his arrival, eliminate all noises of washers, dryer, dishwashers, or vacuum. Try to encourage your children to be quiet. Be happy to see him. Number six, some don'ts. Don't greet him with problems or complaints. Don't complain even if he's late for dinner. Count this as a minor com compared to the fact um, that he may have gone through a lot of work or he may have gone through a lot during the day. Forgive me. Seven, make him comfortable. Have him lean back in a comfortable chair or suggest that he lie down in the bedroom. Have a cooler, warm drink ready for him. Arrange his pillows and offer to take off his shoes. Speak in a low, soft, soothing, and pleasant voice. Allow him to relax and unwind. Number eight, listen to him. You may have a dozen things to tell him, but at the moment of his arrival is not the time. Let him talk first. Number nine, make the evening his. Never complain if he does not take you out to dinner or other places for entertainment. Instead, try to understand his world of strain and pressure, and he needs to be home and relaxed. Number 10, the goal is to try to make your home a place of peace and order where your husband can feel refreshed. Now, I would like you to comment. What do you think about this? <laughs> the lady who actually wrote this book, she said, um, a few things have changed in our society. She said, I think it's safe to assume we'll never find these 10 tips in a modern textbook. But the question is, why shouldn't we? Don't our husbands deserve such treatment? I don't know. It's definitely a lot of food for thought. So I wanted to see your comments on this section. I think it's really good. It's a really good topic starter. I really want to know your thoughts. So go ahead and put them below. Okay, this is the last book that I want to read from. It says, Do all things without complaining and disputing that ye may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Hold and fast to the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. And this comes from uh, Philippians 2, 14 through 16. Uh, I really like that scripture. And um, it just talks about on page four, the life-giving power of gratitude. Start a line of gratitude or a chain of gratitude. It's, oh, I'm thankful for this and I have this and I have this. And before you realize it, you realize I have so much to be thankful for. And um, I wanna just leave you with a prayer. And her prayer says, Heavenly Father, I love you. Thank you for being my magnificent, almighty, loving creator, God. I lift my children to you today. Please help each of them to become grateful people. Forgive me and them for any sins of ingratitude, discontentment, or negativity. Create in us a clean heart and give us all an attitude of thanksgiving. Thank you for your blessings. All of our lives belong to you. Every breath we take is given from you. It's a gift from you. Thank you for adorning my children. Thank you for crafting them so beautifully and for numbering each hair on their head. Lord, help me to show appreciation and model a heart of gratitude to my husband and children each day. Keep me from taking them from granted. Teach me to be thankful to you in all circumstances, no matter how challenging. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die in my place 
and to give me the gift of eternal life with you. I pray that each of my children will establish a saving relationship with you through Jesus. I praise you for the good gifts you have given to me. Help me to trust you and give glory to you in all circumstances. In Jesus' name, amen. So on today, I just wanted to offer up some encouragement to you by reading from the various books. Your assignment today is just to reflect on some of the things that I've said um, and to see how does it apply with your life. Again, making sure that we spend the time with God first. And even if you're not able to do that, you could probably consider um, these devotionals and these scriptures and stuff that I've read uh, to be a part of that. Um, it's certainly a, a start uh, in the right direction. And I want to make sure that you um, take time for your spouse today. Even if it's just three minutes to hear about his day and, you know, how he's doing. And think about that article from the 1950s. How does that apply to your life today? Can you do, maybe you can't do all 10 of those, but can you do one of those things on today? And then since this is focused on the children, what can you do for your children today? Can you color with them? Can you go outside with them? Uh, can you ride bikes with them? Can you sing a song with them? Can you dance with them? Can you play Legos with them? Find one thing to do with them on today. Okay? Blessings.